it, you're going back. On second thoughts, I can't be asked. I've got a much better idea for these. Hello and welcome to another video. So today, um, I was thinking of doing a continuation, a sequel if you like, of the uh, video I did a few weeks back about the truth about losing weight. But what I want to do is to go into more detail macronutrients, you know, breakdowns of protein, you know, carbohydrate, fat, certainly the protein side in terms of muscle retention. Um, certainly when you're trying to lose weight, you go into a calorie deficit. If you go too low, you don't take enough protein, so you'll lose weight, but you'll lose muscle weight as well as fat weight, and, and that's not ideal. Now to start with, the calories in, calories out theory still applies across the board for the whole thing. If you use more energy than the energy you put in, i.e. the fuel, the, the, the food you eat during the day, you will have to lose weight. And vice versa, if you do it the other way, put more food in than the energy you expel, you will gain weight. However, when we start talking about lean weight, as in muscle mass versus um, just general weight, so you know, weight made of muscle and fat, your actual weight uh, as, a, as a lone measurement suddenly becomes a little less relevant to the, the, the bigger picture. There is a measurement that the medical professional community use as just a general overall measurement of whether you're considered overweight or not. This is called the body mass index or BMI. So let's check my weight and put it into the calculator. As you see, if we played this by the book, I would be considered to be overweight. Um, and yes, I'm sure, you know, I'm not shredded and diced, but I think most of you would say that I don't look like I'm overweight. And also the principles here aren't just about bodybuilders, weightlifters, powerlifters. It's anyone who's losing weight, but kind of looking at doing it in a bit more detail, as in purely losing fat, so that not only do you yeah, lose weight, um, but you will look substantially better, you'll be more defined and so on. There is what many people tend to do is they'll lose weight, they'll, they'll drop the calories too low, and what they'll do is they'll lose muscle and fat at the same time, so they become smaller, lighter, um, but yeah, it's, it's that term um, I've heard a few times, and they call it skinny fat, so you can be someone that's actually very slim, um, but yeah, has little or no definition still. So in the previous video, um, I went over the, the issues of dropping your calories too low, and of course the reasons there were you just get to a point where you can't drop them any lower, you, you, the whole thing plateaus, you can't lose any more weight because you just get to a point you, you just couldn't eat any less. Um, and then there's the other key ingredient, which comes into play the lower the calories go, um, which is protein. So on a very basic level, protein is, is, is the building brick of, of, of the muscles and the lean tissue. Um, this is why if you take the calories too low, uh, the, yeah, the, the, the body will not only use body fat as, as, as an energy source, it will also use some of your muscle. And some will say, why would it do that? Because it needs to synthesize protein for more important muscles than your biceps and your pecs, your heart, you know, the muscles in here that make your lungs move and so on, they take priority. A little bit of Googling will give you an idea of the recommended intake, it's sort of a, a gram of protein per kilo of body weight, maybe slightly less. And this is just the, the sort of, you know, the average person. Who, you might do light exercise, but I mean, obviously if you're doing anything heavier, certainly hitting the gym, lifting the weights, you really should be looking more at one, and actually if you're doing the weights, it should be about one and a half grams per kilo of body weight. Um, that is what is required, not only to build, but it's actually even more important if you're trying to actually cut the calories to hold on to what you've already built. Another thing I touched on in the previous video is really not overdoing the amount of de uh, you know, attention that you, you give to the scales, you know, weighing yourself every, every day, you can do it. It's quite good to do that and then get an average over the week, but if you're a pound heavier one day, it could be water. Um, you know, I mean, if, if you sort of just ate a bit more food, you know, eating food while it's still in your system, it, it's in your body, you know, it, it's actually adding to your body weight. Now, further to that, if you're training, um, that could be um, anything from, you know, what I do, you know, bodybuilding, lifting weights, or even if you sort of haven't done much in the way of exercise and then you actually start doing something like running, cycling, you're probably still, 
if you have been generally a non-exercising person previously, add some degree of lean muscle tissue. Now that in itself will cause you know, a minor weight gain. Now what we have to also bear in mind is that muscle tissue can be any time up to six times the density of fat. So basically a pound of muscle would, would actually be significantly smaller. Um, and again, yes, it varies. It could be three times or six times, but it is, it is, a, it is, it is a denser tissue. So what many people do when certainly when they join a gym as part of the diet, so you know, an exercise and uh, a nutritional uh, routine, um, they tend to find sometimes that either they might gain slightly or the weight won't go down. It will just maintain. And of course, to some people that can be quite upsetting, which is why I'll also say, go on other things, you know, your waist measurement. Um, you know, if you're not losing weight or you've even gained weight, but your weight's, your, the waist is smaller, you've lost fat, you have to have done. And that's a great thing. That's far better than just losing overall muscle and fat throughout the whole body. And of course, the other thing that I mentioned in the previous video is the, the use of exercise more as a method of losing the weight, i.e creating more of a calorie burn. Uh, now obviously if you exercise strenuously on a daily basis, yes, that will help. Um, you know, and again, but if you just go for a sort of 20 minute you know, medium jog three times a week, it will help, it all adds up. Um, but again, what a lot of people will do is that and think, well, that's quite good today, I did my jog, so maybe I can have that extra chocolate bar. And actually that jog's probably, you know, maybe done sort of 400 calories in the burn. However, again, if you've got to a position where you know, you're, you're seriously trying to lose, you've got a slow metabolism or whatever, or you know, you're a competing bodybuilder that actually wants to get their body fat down to single digits, um, you'll get to a point where the calories are so low that your options to keeping the protein up are either certain diet styles, again like keto, where you virtually drop carbohydrates and any of your energy will come from fat and protein. Um, and of course, again, the other thing is to keep the protein up but keep you know, the Again, go back to the expenditure of energy and energy out is actually to add exercise, so you're still maintaining the protein, but throughout the day, um, you know, the, the, the in out balance is still reduced. So, yes, apart from being healthy, and I should really do it, but even I on occasions do a little bit of cardio. I'm